My name is Rachel Bradley and um, I am a curator who's been working in the West Midlands for about 25 years and I've curated this exhibition, Worlds Away, Art, Nature and Wellbeing. The themes of the exhibition, the central theme is our relationship, human relationships with the natural world and um, how it contributes to well-being and how it can also induce anxiety, feelings of anxiety about climate change and um, also a, a sense of belonging. The works have been borrowed from uh, national and regional collections. Um, the works have been complemented by um, inviting uh, artists from Birmingham and the wider West Midlands, um, whose work I've been familiar with, um, to contribute to the, um, the theme of the exhibition about our relationship with the natural environment. Well, it's a very diverse and eclectic exhibition and the artworks, they work with various themes, including the physical landscape, mental health and wellbeing, um, people within the landscape, um, and ha with the outsider artists who are involved, we've got uh, Alfred Wallace, Madge Gill, who's also got the exhibition dance in the Downstairs Gallery, um, and Mary Newcomb. And outsider artists, a lot of their work uh, involves um, subject matter of the natural world. So we thought it was important to include them in the exhibition. We've got two commissions in the exhibition by artists, um, one Rona Lee, who is based in London, and one by um, Grace Williams, who's based in uh, Birmingham. Hi, my name's Grace Williams, and I'm one of the commissioned artists here at the MAC. The work behind me um, is called Harai, and that takes uh, in influence from the goddess of the seasons in Greek mythology. So it moves from uh, spring on the left through to winter on the right, and it's really reflective of the history of um, the Cannon Hill Park, which is behind Midlands Art Centre, and the fact that the fantastic Louise Ann Ryland um, donated it to um, the, the public of Birmingham <laughs> and she wanted it to be a leisure space for them where they could take time to be in nature and really um, explore the wonders of the outdoor world um, and I really love the fact that it was 150 years since she did that since she donated it to the public and I wanted to draw on the fact that the Mac um, is central in that kind of Cannon Hill Park area and we have all these beautiful specimens that are um, seasonal so the work reflects that by moving from spring to summer autumn winter and all the different indigenous UK plants that are part of that. So the work really reflects um, the history of women not being able to necessarily always sustain a studio practice. You often had to be married and within the home and not being able to do things necessarily creatively that you can do in contemporary uh, kind of living. Um, so many women had tabletops in their home where they could do things like botanical collage that could really enable them to have a creative outlet. Um, botanical illustration was also considered to be a very safe kind of output for women to do. Um, um, there's this really crazy epidemic in the Victorian era where women were documenting ferns because it was seen as something that was, um, it didn't have sexual organs that were on show, it didn't have anything that would, could be like provocative in any way, it was so sensible and very correct for a woman to be able to draw these plants. So people had ferneries in their own homes and so women were often encouraged to document botanical species, um, particularly ferns in that era. But Similarly, people like Marion North in Kew Gardens, she has this amazing collection of global plant specimens where she traveled independently, was unmarried and had this kind of really boisterous nature where she went out and painted um, indigenous specimens that were kind of in uh, the Southern Hemisphere and showed the landscape in which they were actually surviving and, and thriving. And that's so key now to our understanding of these kind of uh, botanical illustrations and, and the way that plants thrived in, in that era. It's so, so nice to be commissioned to be part of an exhibition at the Midlands Arts Centre. I grew up in Birmingham, I've always worked here, and I came here as a, a young child to have art lessons. So the, the lineage of kind of the trajectory of going from being a small person and seeing exhibitions to then being slightly more mature <laughs> and, you know, being as, as part of these gallery spaces is really fantastic. And all credit to Rachel for obviously really um, being a voice kind of in the community for artists in Birmingham to kind of bring them into these exhibitions and show that there's a great artistic community within the West Midlands that is very much ready to kind of um, exhibit and work professionally. Rona Lee's work, uh, Mineralis Insurrexi, reflects on our extractive relationship to nature. 
Rona Lee's taken materials from her extensive collection of post-war coffee table books that were produced during a period which has been described as the golden age of capitalism. Cutting the mineral images out of their photographic backgrounds in front of which they've been staged, she evokes the processes that have seen these minerals violently unearthed and allows them to dance free. She fills the gaps with, that remain with an eclectic collage of images that remind us of the multiple ways in which we consume the planet as a resource. I am Paul Newman. I'm a, an artist, painter, uh, object maker from Birmingham. And I've been making art in Birmingham since about 2005, I think. Late teenage years, adult years, going into a sort of subdued museum and art gallery and seeing some of these kind of historical paintings on the wall with kind of stormy um, weathers and, and being absorbed into the, the atmosphere. It's almost like I'm, I can go traveling on a journey through the paintings in, in the museums and galleries. So it's always been that kind of feel and, and approach to that, those style of paintings. The one behind me is called um, Don Quixote II, Yellow Mountain and it's a purely an imaginary landscape um, where the idea of painting can intuitively create a kind of, conjure up a kind of world. And the, the figure, the character is, is this kind of version of Don Quixote and he's sort of drifting or becoming absorbed into that landscape.